Hey everyone, this is Justin back doing another video of my food forest in Zone 7B uh, in Piedmont, North Carolina. Um, today I'm going to walk you through the food forest and show you some of the stuff that I have growing. I did a video about uh, maybe a little over a year ago that showed my progress um, one year into a food forest, so this is about two years. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, there can be some it, it can be difficult to decide what to plant in your food forest, especially in some of the temperate climates because it seems like all the resources out there are for people who are in really cold climates or in really warm like tropical climates. Um, but uh, you can definitely do some food forest stuff in a more temperate climate. It's just a matter of choosing the right plants and knowing what you're doing um, and definitely using a couple little tricks. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'll walk you through my layout of my food forest and um, how I did a few things, give you some updates on some of my trees, go talk about the varieties of the perennial plants as well as some of the annuals that are mixed in, and uh, I'll talk about some of the other problems that I have, some of the weeds and um, plant uh, and tree selection um, issues when it comes to climate choice. Uh, stick around and we'll walk through the whole thing. At the very end I'll show you my uh, vegetable garden, my annual garden, which is separate, um, and uh, I'll show you some of the stuff that we have growing back there too. All right, so first let's go over the layout of the food forest. Um, on the south side of my food forest, uh, my house is to the right here, and this is kind of the front slash side yard um, walking into the house. Um, my food forest is, so I'm on the south side, so the back tree line is the, is the north side up through there. Um, and then each of my rows are kind of in these semicircular rows going across in the food forest. So um, the cool thing about the property is the back, the north side is a little bit taller, higher up than the south side. So I get a little better sun exposure um, throughout almost like a stadium effect. And I think that that's a really um, awesome idea. If you can ever have a slight south facing slope, I feel like it can get your plants and trees just a little better sunlight. Um, it's part of the crows in the background. We've got lots of uh, birds flying around here. Um, so next what we're going to do is we'll walk a little bit closer and we'll look at um, some of the plants that we have here. So that, imagine this is the south facing side front edge. Um, I would love to extend this border all the way down into this open area, um, but I'm still fighting weeds such as wisteria right here and che creeping charlie. Um, a lot of people do really thick and heavy mulch um, and compost, which is awesome. I do and try to use as many of the tricks in the book with cardboard and everything as I can. But when you're battling weeds such as wisteria that pops up everywhere, um, that can be a little bit of an issue. Unfortunately, um, the wisteria in our, on our property was so mismanaged or, or let go for so long that, that unfortunately it, it's just a, never going to be something I'm going to defeat. It's something I have to be at peace with and just let it do what it's going to do. Um, I'm even trying some plastic, black plastic, to kill off some of the sections of weeds. I know that's not desirable, but I'd rather do that than start spraying stuff um, that's just my personal preference. Let's, uh, let's walk a little bit further into the food forest and I'll go over some of the varieties of the plants that I have growing here. All right, I got a little distracted, uh, talking about the weed issues. That's obviously a dominating theme in the food forest, but let's talk about these varieties that we have, um, growing in the food forest and things that if you're in a temperate climate, I recommend you should try growing. Um, and what I would do differently and some details that go with each one. On this front edge here, uh, I have a Nanking cherry bushes. Um, they are, I've got about what five of them planted here. I should have probably planted twice as many and planted them twice as close, but um, I didn't really, I didn't know what their growth rate was going to be and I didn't want them to fill in too much. Um, I definitely recommend planting Nanking cherry. We had our first little crop this year. Some people say they don't taste that great, great um i did a video about the taste and the flavor uh, another video in my channel on my channel um i definitely recommend checking it out but you should plant i think nanking cherry is a good choice it has a really pretty flower and um it, it's something i think is easy, easy to propagate by seed so if i do keep these plants in here i'll most likely fill in the spots with younger plants this one right here is only i think a year old this one is two years old it just hedged it back to make more of a bushy form um, but 
ideally you could fill in this whole row um, and make it kind of like a barrier um, with, a, with enough plants. Um, right behind the Nanking cherry, we have artichokes, and there's artichokes, these globe arti green globe artichokes are um, throughout the garden in various places. Um, they're, I think they're a really cool plant. I think they're attractive. I think they're, they're somewhat pretty. They can be used as a barrier or a barricade. Um, they're artichokes when they, the artichokes, when they pop up, they'll, when they open, they'll make a very pretty flower. And if you pick them early enough before they get hard and tough on the outside, you can, um, you can harvest the artichoke and, and use them in a lot of recipes, which is awesome. Um, here's another much larger plant. Um, and this is after I planted these last spring. So this is a year into them. My previous video I did, I don't think these were around. Um, so we went over the globe artichokes. Let's go down. Let's see what else we have here. Um, these are um, Hanson bush cherry. These little cherry bushes through here. They're kind of hard to tell and differentiate from other um, plants because of the greenery. I think this last video I did, um, there was not as much green popping out quite yet. So it was a little bit easier to see each individual plant. Um, now everything becomes a little more homogenous. Um, in a temperate food forest, I feel like you have to take advantage of the spaces in between and plant things that are going to be more of an annual crop or more of a um, more of a short-term crop. Um, I have garlic interplanted here in between these two bushes, and this is just a kind of a, an example of multiple multiple uh, overlaying layers of crops. Um, trying to get the most yield for my space that I have. Um, so I have these bush cherries that are, uh, there's about three of them here. And then in between two of them, I had a bigger space, so I planted this garlic. And I'm about to pull this garlic out. You can tell it's turning yellow, and I have some um, scapes that I need to pull. But once I pull that garlic out, in between the garlic, I have this okra already ready to go. So that's almost like a, a layer within a layer. Um, just trying to make the most use of my space. I feel like if you are going to do a food forest in the temperate region, you have to be creative like that. You're going to have to take advantage. We just don't have as um, much as many opportunities with some of the more tropical um, plants and even some of the cold hardy plants that some people in other food forest regions have or regions who are growing for a food forest. Um, obviously, we're going to throw in lots of flowers for pollinators. Got our marigolds and zinnias just about to pop open and um, some balsam per peppermint stick. This is a plant that I, I'm, I'm a sucker for all the different seeds at um, the Baker Creek Seed Company. So I have a couple that are flowering already. That must have just been put in the ground. Um, but obviously we're gonna throw in lots of flowers within everything else. Um, we've got, we do have parsley and some herbs thrown in um, and you can just barely see it, but there's an apple tree mixed in there. And that apple tree has been in the ground for about two years now, um, and it's starting to take off a little bit more. I prune pretty heavily. I pretty much prune everything to an open center here in North Carolina. Um, we have really humid weather, so I don't want, I want to have good airflow through that plant. And I mean, it's almost, you almost can look right through it without even realizing there's a plant there if you stare at it hard enough. Um, obviously, we're going to throw in some green vegetables. Um, we've I think that was an attempt at a broccoli or maybe a purple cauliflower right here. Uh, and it's June, so unfortunately we just get a lot of the caterpillars and stuff munching on things this time of year. Um, as we go forward, I have thrown in some rows. So here's kind of a good example of a row that I've planted, right? And within this row we have a little bit of everything. We have uh, some fennel, we have some nasturtium. I even have some pepper plants that will pop up eventually here. You can see there, um, there's a squash plant right here, some borage, and there's even a little apple tree here. I believe that's an Arkansas black apple that I just planted at the beginning of the spring. I had an open spot. Um, there's some chamomile planted in rows all along through here. So this will probably pop out and start to flower soon. In fact, here's a little bit of a chamomile flower showing up and um, you can kind of see I have clover planted in my walkways I got this idea from another 
um, YouTube video. I'll try to remember what his name is, um, what their channel's name is by the end of it. it might have been like Canadian permaculture or something like that. But I really like it because this is this is just a. It gets hot here, and um, I use it as like a chop and drop. So whenever I plant a new plant, I'll stick it in the ground and I'll put. You don't want to you know crowd it with mulch, um, which a lot of people use a lot of mulch and comp and compost. So this uh this clover i can just reach in and grab a handful of it and and basically surround the whole plant with a big pile of it and that breaks down and eventually um it it will be like a, a compost but it in the short term it does um, prevent the soil from drying out and helps plants get established um here's another apple tree i believe that's a pink lady apple tree again i like to try to prune them to open center but that tree still has a lot of work to do I let some of the um, some of the uh, branches grow inward which we don't want to do and I probably have too many support branches or scaffold branches on that tree um, over here we do have some um, pluere up uh, I think this is a pl flavor punch um, Pluot. Um, I get the names mixed up, but there's a flavor punch and a play, flavor supreme, and they're um, Pluots or Pluaries, which is basically the you know hybrid of the of the plum and the cherry or the the apricot and the plum, um, being that they're stone fruits. That is something that is possible. Um, here's another fruit tree. This is a bubblegum plum tree. Um, those three trees I just showed you, I have not had fruit yet. This was the first year that they actually flowered. So we're a year, we're two years in. So they say you should probably expect a few years before you get fruit off of most trees. Um, I would have been ecstatic to get fruit this year, but I definitely didn't expect it. Um, as I mentioned before, more squashes um, and uh, watermelon vines. I will, this area is kind of open, there's not a lot of plants in this area, but I, I know um, from previous experience that eventually all of this will be filled in with vine for, from pumpkin vines and squash vines. So I don't um, force myself to plant too much in this back area knowing that stuff is going to take over. Um, I think I briefly mentioned this black plastic that I don't love, but it is doing a really good job of holding back the weeds and letting my blueberry bushes which I moved get established you can kind of see back on this back row here right so I let I wanted those to get established a little bit better before stuff started to take over good and uh, going down the row you can see there's a we'll go here there's a pear tree here um, I, I think it's a, a Chojuro Asian pear and then um, there's another uh, Bartlett pear here. And I have two big or a bit larger um, peach trees. Um, the Red Havens, which I think is probably a great choice for this area. And in the very background, you can see those white flowers up just past those trees right here. And those are that's where my elderberries are. And they're kind of closer to the pond where they get a little bit more water drain off. They, they don't mind having some moist soil. So if you have a moist area, I definitely recommend putting some elderberry plants in that area if you can't find anything else to grow. Um, next we're going to go forward and we're going to look at our next, we're basically we'll hop over to our next row. So um, in this area we've got some um, Asian persimmon varieties that were just planted and here's another one here. I do think that they have fruit on them this year and um, I, I don't think that you need to be super specific with the variety um, based on your growing zone. I think that you can kind of pick whatever flavors or what you read, what you might like based on what you're reading about them. I just, um, I, I chose the um, Fuyu and then the, um, I think it was called the Ichijiro Kiki or um, I'll check the name here for you. Um, it's the, yeah, the, the Ichi Kiki Jiro, I, I said it backwards, um, persimmon variety, and that was just based on what I had read from people in the past, um, saying that it worked well in, in this kind of climate. So um, definitely worth reading about, though, and making your own decision. You can see I have sunflowers um, planted with amongst all of these plants and, and just kind of everything dispersed. So let's go back across this row. Here's a peach tree that was planted from seed from a pit. I had saved. I have some Mata Ross melons planted here. It's kind of like a cantaloupe. 
Um, plenty of zinnias all along this row. So just giving you guys ideas of things to plant. And um, these are honeyberry bushes. I did my video on honeyberries already on what they taste like. And here's another one right here. I definitely recommend trying them. Um, this zone is a little bit of a um, warm climate for them. They tend to like cooler climates. Um, so I would definitely read about um, the varieties and, and when they um, fruit or when they flower um, so that they don't get hit with a frost or they don't get overheated or all the different vari variables that go into growing um, a honeyberry or something that needs some kind of cold colder weather. I have some planted in my backyard that um, get morning sun but no evening or afternoon heat. Um, so it'll be interesting to compare the two and see how they, they go. Just you know, making a note uh, just goes to show you how important microclimates are when it comes to growing different plants in your yard. Um, it's not always about if you have a warm enough or cold enough place. Sometimes it's about putting it in the right place in your yard because you might only be half a zone off and the front of your yard might be zone 7A and the back might be 7B, just depends. Um, this bush right here hidden behind this destroyed uh, cauliflower plant is uh, Gumi. And I believe it's from um, the One Green World, and it's the Tillamook Gumi. It's the one that I've read about that has the largest um, fruit and makes it most worthwhile your time for growing. Um, I definitely recommend that variety. Um, everything I've read about it says that that's the one that you're going to want. I do have multiples of them, and I believe they're a nitrogen fixer, so that's a, a great thing to keep into consideration whenever you're planting other plants plants next to, you know, when you're co-planting or whenever you're doing different plant guilds. Um, this is that balsam, peppermint balsam stick plant that I was talking about. Um, I'm not sure how tall they get, but definitely a pretty flower uh, to have dispersed within your garden and attract pollinators. Um, and it's right next to another Nanking cherry that I had planted. Um, I had one die and I had to replace one, so that one filled in my spot. Um, red vein sorrel, St. John's wart, more artichokes, purple cauliflower planted in the garden, lots of nasturtium to attract pollinators and edible and um, lup lupines. I, I'll say I'm wrong probably. Um, I can't get them to grow very well in this area. I think it's just me. I don't think it's anything to do with this climate. I think it's just something that um, is I struggle with personally, just not doing a good job putting them in the right spot. And I like, I, I love those nasturtiums, so I try to grow some different varieties, some, some orchid nasturtiums and, and, and uh, some tall trailing nasturtiums and a few other varieties. Um, the, I do try to grow some medicinal plants in the um, food forest, so I've got things such as yarrow and um, marshmallow plant, um, and I'm probably saying some of these wrong because I haven't looked at their labels in a long time, but most of this I grow from seed anyways. Zinnia about to pop open, celosia, plenty more zinnia, and as you can tell, a common theme with the green leafy vegetables is they're getting destroyed. Um, a good ground cover in a temperate climate would be, um, I would say strawberries are great ground cover. If you want to compete with some of the other uh, weedy ground covers, strawberries are great. Um, the, I'm not sure if these are June bearing. These must be an ever bearing variety because um, I feel like most of our fruits here in North Carolina bear in May. Uh, most of our strawberries bear really in May. And uh, we're well past that. We're in kind of the first or second week in June here. Um, planting herbs, I also tend to do um, within the food forest. I feel like they add some texture and some decoration, but they're also very useful. Um, and more elder, uh, let's see, no, not elderberry, sorry, uh, marigold and perpetual spinach snuck in there. And uh, you can even see a little bit of uh, dill, let's see, dill right through here, um, purple coneflower echinacea, which is throughout the garden everywhere, lots of echinacea, um, and it seeds out pretty prevalently. Uh, looks like mm, cilantro maybe planted down through here is going to seed. Uh, so we'll let that go to seed and let that turn into coriander. Um, coming across, we've got calendula. Calendula 
I have a little little pots right here with some late season squashes I'm gonna stick through stick out plant out um, and that's just kind of my little nursery hidden nursery for now more of those pop balsam peppermint for our balsam peppermint stick plants more artichokes so you're kind of getting an idea of, of some repeating plants in a temperate food forest I really like um, this is a red Fuji apple um, and I believe it's the super red Fuji from, um, let's see, maybe, da, 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 I'm not sure if it was, uh, Stark Brothers. It was from Stark Brothers. So just trying to recall some of the locations that I got some of these. I have little plants such as dahlias popping up. I just planted this and it's starting to pop up. I have my little plant label there just to remind myself. I'll have to pull those out soon so I can get the garbage out of here. Good. This is our purple artichoke, a little different than the green globe. Uh, this is an Anna apple tree that I planted this year. So we're just letting it get a chance to get established and then we'll try to form it into a, uh, an open center. Good. This is the back side of the road that we already went through. So I'm just going to zip through here. And plenty of squash plants and this is the back of the persimmon trees that we showed you. And here are the row, row of blueberries. Uh, I'll definitely fill this area in with more plants, and it'll probably look somewhat like the section we just walked through within a year or so, maybe planting out in the early spring next year. So I said Mata Ross. Um, we also have, let's see what other varieties we have here. Um, I'm not sure exactly, but there, that's a cantaloupe variety of some sort. This is a fig tree. This is the um, white Marseille, Marseille, I believe, fig. Um, we did get a late frost, which did some damage to it, but it's starting to leaf back out. I don't know that we'll get a fruit. It's only been in the ground for one year. So figs are something that um, you could definitely grow if you have the patience for um, dealing with the temperature because it's in zone 7B or P mo more moderate temperate areas. You're kind of right on the edge of being able to grow them you might need some some winter protection if they're um, a lot of people will grow them in pots and transport them in and out outside so a lot more um, sunflowers good a lot more zinnia good and um, definitely more yarrow which takes over uh, this is a flying dragon citrus I uh, forget the scientific name but it's not a highly desirable fruit, but it is cold hardy. And worst case scenario, I could always attempt um, grafting another citrus variety onto it. Um, it is, it has been in as long as all the other plants. And obviously, as you can tell, it doesn't grow quite as crazy. It's very thorny, very thorny. Um, it hasn't grown quite as all the other temperate loving or cooler um, tolerant plants so we'll see how um, that goes over the long term um, whether it was smart or not I planted right on the edge here some some uh, black raspberries we will see how they do in this climate they are doing awesome right now I have really struggled to get any type of raspberry to grow in this climate because of the heat that is here especially at the end of the summer but this plant is kicking butt and we're even starting to get some black raspberry fruits so um, we'll be able to taste those soon and, and kind of figure out if that's a variety that we want to keep obviously if we do decide to pull them out it'll be a lot of work because they have spread pretty fast and it is the back edge of my food forest but it's not that far from my house so hopefully I didn't um, create a problem for myself I don't think they'll be as invasive as the blackberries um, I believe that this little fruit right here is a Tilton apricot that I planted. Yeah, that's an apricot. So I planted three new fruit trees this year. I think over the last two years, I've probably planted close to 25 to 30 trees. And uh, this is one of the newer ones that I planted. And as you can tell, beans sprouting up the sides of the cage that I have protecting it. And that's just from, you know, uh, beans dropping last year and, and me not getting them and then them shooting up uh, little little uh, volunteers. Um, something that I don't necessarily recommend planting in the main food forest but you could probably put along the back edge of something is this um, 
lemon balm. I think that it's a very cool plant. It smells great, but it definitely spreads pretty crazily. Um, in this back area, I'm competing with a lot of weeds. So if, if that's the weed that I'm fighting, I really don't mind that if it's stopping, if it's creating a little bit of a barrier for that creeping Charlie. So it doesn't advance further into the food forest. Um, a lot of the plants back in this back row along my fence, I've kind of, uh, let them do what they want to do and I am not as picky about how much they take over. I've got little Malabar spinach down on the ground here. These guys popping up everywhere. They'll probably grow up to that side of the fence there. Um, and they they don't take they're not invasive. They don't take over, but they do they they seed very prevalently. And um, it's a good green vegetable to eat though. It's a nice thing to have in the hot heat summer hot summer when all your other green vegetables are kind of growing out. I'll also point out just in the back, I'm trying to grow on my posts. I'm trying to grow um, uh, grape varieties. I think Himrod is the one variety, and um, I'll try to think of the other variety, maybe Mars grape, and um, those are doing okay. Those actually took off this year, so they look really good. I'm really surprised about that. And then another vine that I'm trying to grow along the back of my fence are these cold hardy um, kiwis and those are doing really well also you know trying to make the use of the fence posts or anything like that as far as trying to get um, vining plants that can fruit for you that grow in your climate it can be tricky in a temperate area but it's definitely possible this giant tree right here is a all-in-one almond tree um, I never had it flower I've never had it fruit obviously and so it'll be interesting to see what happens um, it, it's doing awesome as far as growth goes. I do need to do some serious trimming on it though. Um, like I said, we grow some medicinals here. Here's burdock, um, which you can dig the root out of and eat. More marigold, more uh, okra, more nasturtium. This is a reliance peach tree. So lots of peaches. You're definitely going to see a lot of peaches in the food forest. Little pepper plants mixed in. Um, more coneflower, more zinnia. I've got cucumber plants on this trellis right here, or I guess in this cage, hopefully growing up this cage. I've got a row of tomato plants along this back here. I've got another apple tree. I believe that's a Granny Smith apple. Just an apple variety that has a lower end, lower chill hours and other varieties. Not necessarily going to perform amazing in this area but it'll perform better than like a honey crisp wood in this area just because the climate we don't have quite the cold weather that we need for something like that i'm sure we could grow it i just don't know how well it'll fruit and obviously you know when you're growing a food forest you're trying to grow it for the food so um i, I don't mind wasting space for trees and experimental stuff but i want to try to get as much fruit out of it as possible and food just in general um i just pulled garlic out of this area and I already had some calendula plopped in there, so when I pulled it out, I almost didn't really have to plant anything, just move some mulch around, and uh, we were already ready to go. More marigolds. Um, I bought a few plants from the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. If you're in a Piedmont, North Carolina, that's a great resource to look at. Um, the J.C. Ralston Arboretum has lots of very cool plants, and I get some ideas for some of my plants that I'm going to plant based on what they have and what they can grow. Obviously, they're the pros, but I want to if they if they're able to get something to grow, I'm going to try to get it to grow. And I, just speaking of that, another one was a pineapple guava, which I I always pronounce wrong. wrong Fajoa. F F uh, Fioja, I, I can't remember, I always pronounce that wrong. I'm sure someone in the comments will correct me, or I guess just type it out so I can see what the words look like, um, what the letter looks like. Moving on, we've got curry plant here, which is not curry, it just has that curry taste and flavor to it. Lots of sage, lots of um, holy basil, African blue disc daisies, another flower that I, I just couldn't resist trying to blow, to grow. Um, peas growing on that trellis in the background. I'm sure there's a dahlia planted somewhere in the ground popping up back there, maybe right here. So lots of flowers mixed in. I highly recommend mixing flowers into your food forest. A lot more strawberries. That's a contender peach tree that's been in the ground for about two years now, I believe and uh, that was planted, that was just bought from like a big box, like home improvement store, and uh, 
that's done really well. Of course, I've really aggressively um, controlled the shape of it, and I, it's really cool, almost bonsai-like. A um, little bit of salvia next to these calendulas, tomato plants mixed in, so I'm, I'm really mixing and, and matching a lot of my plants. A big carpet of strawberry plants, which I, I don't really love this variety, so I'm going to probably swap it out for another one. Um, lemon creeping, oregano, lovage is this plant here. This is a uh, an herb that tastes like a very, very strong celery taste. It tastes more, more like celery than celery tastes like. Um, in the back, we're going to have some... Let's see, we've got more squash, watermelon vines, and then that cage is over... Um, some sunflowers that I um, had planted three or four times and birds kept getting them. And I just had to finally give in and do some, do a little more work to protect the plant because the birds were getting them before. And looks like this planting has worked really well. Uh, we then come over across the back. We've got some an experiment, an experimental potato planting inside some mulch. And we've got corn interplanted with sunflowers and I'm going to throw some beans or I already planted some beans in this little trellis here this little cage to grow up nearby and um, more sunflowers more zinnias and a um, another peach tree which is dropping fruits but these keep in mind my fruit trees are only in year two now um, so year two to three so to have them dropping fruit is totally expected. In fact, you know, there's people out there that would say, hey, you should wait until another year before you try to get fruit out of them. So any fruit I get, I'll be happy with. Um, now, one thing that I'm very excited about, but also very nervous about, about is this um, snowbank blackberry bush, which is fruiting this year. And I'm excited about it because I think it will be very cool to have the white blackberry but at the same time, I also think that this plant could start to spread pretty rapidly. And I'm already seeing stuff sprouting up and, and shooting up through the sides that could totally be a problem for me one day. Um, this, like I said, the back edge of my food forest is a little more wild, even though it's in my yard. So I'm not as, you know, t like strict about what grows where. But... It does definitely, um, blackberry does not have a good reputation as far as being able to get rid of if it does take over. Um, there's a lot of, in, in my food forest, there's a lot of um, little like runner um, volunteer persimmon trees. And that's probably from our big mother persimmon tree here in the background. And this thing becomes loaded in the fall and is just full of orange fruits. And so I will probably either pick which ones I want. I will probably, maybe if I have room, if it, the plant pops up in a good spot, I may graft um, a persimmon variety onto these little volunteers, or I guess they're probably just like runners um, or root sprouts or water sprouts, basically. Um, but I hate to dig them out. I might dig them out and try to pot, pot them up and then graft stuff onto them, but using scion from my Asian varieties, we'll see. Um, sea berry is a nitrogen fixer that seems to do very, very well here but once again it shoots up little sprouts and if I see one I'll show you yep here's one just randomly on its own from the plant a few feet away so you know they tend to pop up everywhere and uh, that is definitely you know what they're known for it's just you have to know what you're planting when you start planting uh, more garlic planted in with stuff amongst these, uh, these uh, kiwi vines, and obviously sunflowers popping up everywhere just based on where I've scattered the seeds. So that's pretty much it for the most part. Um, that's a large camellia tree that was here before we moved in, and it's pretty in the, when nothing else is blooming, so I always leave it in the winter to have some color in the winter. Anyways, like I said, that's pretty much the food forest. Um, I grow a lot of perennials, and I grow a lot of um, annuals mixed in with it. I hope that that helps. You really should do um, a lot of reading and a lot of research to try to figure out the varieties that um, you want to grow. It is, it can be difficult and you hate to put four years into a plant and then have it not be what you think it is. Um, 
but it's still worth planting. And if you end up not liking a variety, you can always graft a different variety onto that variety. Um, let's go back. I'll walk to the back of the garden and we'll go to the annual garden. Um, I know this is a pretty long video, so that's the food forest. If you want to stick around, um, the next part of the video, we'll go back and we'll check out the um, actual vegetable garden where I just have kind of my normal vegetables, tomato crops and stuff growing in the back. Um, so hang in there and we'll be right there with you. All right, so here's my uh, vegetable garden in uh, temperate Piedmont, North Carolina. Um, these are just some beds that I've added over the years um, with just to expand so I could grow some elephant garlic and some kale and stuff. And, and uh, I had uh, some cauliflower here that's coming out. It's getting attacked by bugs and we've pretty much tapped all those crops out and potatoes that are ready to come out soon as they start to turn yellow. Um, I'm going to hang back just a little bit because the AC just turned on. But down along the front row, I did a little hugel mound right through here, and I planted a bunch of squash on them, and they're doing really well. In North Carolina, I really struggle with um, the squash vine borers or squash bugs, so that's been kind of an annoying and frustrating thing to uh, deal with. So I had to be really diligent about picking off the bugs, and I'm, now they're at a point where the plants are so big that I and I have you know a hundred of them in the food forest compared to the you know, 10 or so here, I just couldn't keep up with it if I tried. Um, in the vegetable garden, I'm a little more controlled with things, so I definitely inspect these plants a lot more than I do out in the food forest. The food forest is just kind of like a survival of the fittest type of thing. And uh, so I wanted to, I was struggling growing grapes, and I, so I figured I would just try to grow muscadine. And um, so I threw this at the front of my garden where I check every single day and it has done really well and is starting to fruit this year and so um, in North Carolina you know this area if you're going to grow grapes I would definitely recommend growing a muscadine variety even if it's just to learn from just to learn how to prune different types of grapevines and to learn about them because it can be really um, it's really a little bit more finicky than some of the other things that you can grow um, Let's go, I'm gonna take a walk over here. We'll go into the actual garden. And there's nothing different about my garden, vegetable garden, than compared to what most people are doing. Um, you know, I have a row of pepper plants, you know, with we, you know, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, you know, maybe 26 or 30 tomato plants, 26 to 30 tomato plants, um, or pepper plants, sorry about that. Um, we grow a lot of beets, so these beets are ready to get pulled out because it's starting to get hot. Um, continual uh, cabbage issues or, or caterpillar issues. Uh, a little bit of a, this is a experimental sunchoke or Jerusalem artichoke grown in a pot. Uh, eggplants growing here. All kinds of arugula mixed in with, um, with, with carrots. So carrots are starting to ready to be harvested. This has gone a little bit out of control because arugula tends to self-seed itself. Uh, lots of snap peas growing up that trellis. Tomato plants in the background. I grow about 14 different varieties. Beans, lots of different bean varieties. Um, dra dragon beans. I love those dragon beans. Those are those in the background. And I just planted some here as well. Um, th this, we're almost under trees here. but Or we are under trees here, I should say. But the garden is south-facing, so as long as... It's not midsummer in the during the the longest days of the year when the sun is the highest. Um, we get really good sun here, and honestly, on those days where it's really really hot and the days are really really long, we don't get as much sun, which is actually not that bad because it's so hot that it does give the garden a little bit of shade. Um, got some cucumbers growing up the trellis here. Got some bitter gourd growing up the trellis. We've got some Thai soldier beans. We've got more beans. I think these are, um, I forget what type they were. These, they're a yellow potted or yellow bean. With various squashes and patty pans mixed in. I'm trying to grow lettuce in the back row here because that's in the shade and I figure that's the best place for it in such a hot area. It can be very hard to grow green leafy vegetables throughout the summer. And uh, just planted, just pulled lettuce out of this garden, this section here. It was very, um, 
it was all very bitter and it was going to seed. Um, so I just pulled those out and I had plants ready to go. So I stuck these cucumbers in just yesterday. We'll see how they climb up that trellis, see how they do. And I've still got little spaces to fill in with other plants, maybe some okra and stuff in the meantime. Um, last but not least, here are some of my tomato plants that seem to be doing pretty well. Um, they grow pretty fast in this area. Tomato plants grow really well in our climate here. I definitely love like the raised bed because it can rain a lot here. I feel like it drains pretty well. A raised bed can drain very well and can keep all of the moisture, you know, to a minimum, I suppose, as far as, as far as avoiding them getting watered down too bad. Um, thanks for watching the video that that's pretty much everything I have growing. I, uh, there's little things scattered throughout the property and other areas. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, finding them in their little nooks and crannies. And a lot of those are experimental plants. Um, just trying to make the most and learn as much as I can about this area. Share when you're caught in the comments what you've learned about growing in a climate like this. If you've got any good tips or tricks or any good plant varieties that grow really well compared to other varieties. I'm always uh, loving hearing things from other people. Um, that's why I'm making these videos because there's just not a lot out there about our growing zone and our climates and especially when it comes to permaculture and food forests and stuff like that. Um, it seems to be very difficult to get the resources that are out there for other locations. Um, thank you for uh, watching the video, like I said, once more, and I hope you have a great day.